Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, you're welcome to this live session. Um, my name is Eugene, and um, today we're going to be looking at scholarships in Germany. We're going to be looking at um, studying in Germany, um, the step by step, and we're also going to be looking at um, student jobs in Germany. It promises to be um, a very interesting session as my very good friend, um, Anne Khan, um, Akban, who is going to be joining me in this live session. So you want to sit back and relax and get a pen. Um, we're going to in be interested in your questions. So you want to put them right on the screen. Um, we will take every question that we'll get on this uh, session. OK, um, so we're going to be going right away into this. Before we go into um, the session proper, um, I'll just give a brief breakdown on every aspect um, of this session. Okay, so I'm going to take the, the first part. Um, the session is divided into three parts. So the first part is going to be about scholarships. And in this session, I'm going to teach you how to search for scholarships in Germany. Um, I'm also going to look at, we're going to be looking closely at one prestigious scholarship. So you want to stick, you want to stay back and watch this uh, session. Um, there's a prestigious scholarship we're going to be looking at. And after that, we'll go to the second part um, where Aneka is going to be talking about um, the step-by-step -step procedure to study in Germany, okay? And then he will, he's going to talk about um, the documents you're going to need to study in Germany, uh, the documents you will need for your visa application. And thereafter, he's going to talk about the block account and how you can um, get and where you can um, get a blocked account. Okay, and then the, the, the third part is going to be about cost of living in Germany and um, student jobs in Germany. What is available for you? Because I believe a lot of persons um, just, they, uh, they don't just want to move to study, but they also want to make some money along the line. So this session promises to be very interesting and packed, and um, you're definitely going to uh, enjoy it. So without wasting um, further time, we're going to go straight into it. And I'm going to share my screen right now and take you through um, the process whereby you can search for scholarship. And if you have any question, you can simply put it down on the comment section and we're going to take a look at it. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. So guys, this is um, the DAD uh, scho uh, scholarship website. It's also the DAD website where you can search for um, scholarships, a lot of scholarships right here. So once you get to this page, the next thing you want to do is to scroll down and on the left corner, uh, you're going to find uh, these boxes. Um, then you can, you can set your preference on what you want to search for. So it is very easy. I'm going to drop a link uh, to this page on the, on the um, description after this live session. So you can check it, you can take a look at it. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to um, click on these programs, and then you want to select um, the, the, the program that you are interested in. If you are going for an undergraduate program, you can click on undergraduate. And if you're going for graduate, you can select graduate. For this example, we're going to be using um, graduates. So I'm going to click on that. And then you also want to click your country of origin. Uh, and I'm going to be um, using Nigeria. I'm just going to type Nigeria there and yeah, select Nigeria. So depending on where you're coming from, your country of origin, you want to select your country of origin. You can also select um, the subject um, area you're interested in, um, but I'm going to leave that empty for now. You can also select your intentions, okay? So the next thing you want to do is to click on refine your selection. It's going to give you a list of different um, scholarships that you can apply to as um, like this example, as a Nigerian looking for a graduate studies. Uh, these are different scholarships. So we have about 56 of them um, right here uh, that I can apply to. So you want to go through um, each of them and see the one that really fits into what you want. So they'll have different types of um, scholarships in terms of the money you get from the scholarship. And uh, they are different, they, they have different requirements and eligibility. So you want to take a look at them to, to really get the one that fits into you. And you can see right here, there are a lot of them. There are a lot of pages um, of scholarships and opportunities. So for this video, I'm going to go to the third 
page. So right here we have um, uh, this DAD EPOS scholarship, uh, the development related postgraduate courses. So this is a scholarship that I have talked about in my YouTube channel. Uh, uh, in my last video, I talked about the DAD EPOS scholarship right here. So you can, you can uh, take a look at it right here on my YouTube channel. So this is a scholarship that gives you um, free tuition. You get about 861 euro if you are doing your master's and up to 1,200 euro if you are doing your PhD on a monthly basis. And it also pays your flight ticket. So um, even if you don't have any money, you don't have to worry about paying your flight to Germany. And um, there's no application fee. Um, it also gives, it also allows you to bring your family along with you while coming to Germany to study. Uh, there are a lot of benefits about this scholarship. They also, they also pay your um, dependents, your family dependents um, that come with you on a monthly basis too. So you can take a look at that video right here to know more about it after this session. So let's go back to our page. So uh, you can take a look at that. And if we go down right here, we have this scholarship called Hemot Smith Program. Um, it is a master's scholarship for specific um, areas of study like politics, um, social science, management, law, business, and uh, management administration. Um, so you want, we are going to be taking a look at this scholarship on this live session. So as I go through it, if you have a question, you can drop it on the comment section. Okay, so once you've gotten the scholarship you want, you want to click on it. So for this, for this live, we are taking a look at uh, the Hemel Smith. So I'm going to click on that. Uh, this is a scholarship which is quite similar to the DAD EPS scholarship. Um, this scholarship takes care of your flight ticket also. It takes care, it gives you about 861 euro monthly as a stipend. Uh, it takes care of your, um, there's no tuition fee, so tuition is free. And it, it also allows you to bring your family with you and they also get an allowance. Uh, it covers your health insurance, uh, study grants, as well as um, rent subsidies. So there are a lot of benefits for this uh, scholarship. So uh, it is eligible to a list of countries also. We're going to take a look at it right now. So I'm going to click on the list of countries that are eligible. So similar to that of that EPUS, you want to make sure your country is part of this list before you apply to this scholarship. Okay, I'm, I'm, I will just go back. Okay, this is the list. I believe it wasn't showing initially. So this is the list of the um, countries that are eligible for this DAD um, uh, Helmut Smith scholarship. So let's go back to uh, our database. Okay, so the next thing we want to do now is to check the eligibility of this scholarship. Those who are eligible or the requirements, um, um, what is required of you before you can apply to this scholarship. Okay, I believe you can see my screen. Um, yeah, so this, uh, I already talked about the benefits of this scholarship. There's going to be linked to these pages um, in the description, so you can check it out after this session. So I already talked about the benefits of this scholarship. You can also take a look at it um, by yourself. And I'll just go down on this page. And yeah, we have the selection criteria. Okay, so if you have watched my video on that DPOS scholarship, you should have an idea about um, the criteria for that scholarships. So um, it is not too different from that EPOS scholarship. Um, the difference is that um, for the he Helmut Smith scholarship, it is not specified that you must have two years of working experience, um, but still your first degree should not be more than six years. As you can see right here, it is stated right here. And um, um, it is also an advantage if you have some political or social involvement, as you can see here. I don't know if you can see my mouse. Okay. Um, also, if you have some um, evidence of internships um, or professional experience, it will also be taken uh, into consideration positively, as you can see right here. Okay, those are some of the requirements 
Um, every other thing is quite similar to that of um, that POS. So you can also take a look at it. Now, the most important thing, how do you apply to this um, Hemot Smith scholarship? And also take notes, we are going to take a look at the eligible courses um, very soon, the courses that are eligible for this scholarship. So how do you apply? It is also similar to the EPOS scholarship. It is one way application, uh, which means that you only have to submit an application for admission. And while doing that, you have to submit um, the required documents for scholarship. For example, the DAD application form, as well as other documents um, that they are all listed here. So I'm just going to go down here. You can see the, re the relevant documents. So you can also check out, we have the DAD application form, motivation letter, um, the um, CV in Europass format. I also talked about how to create your CV in Europass format in the previous video where I talked about that EPOS scholarship. So you can also take a look at that. So we have working time certificates and every other document. And the deadline uh, for this scholarship is 31st of July. Um, it's a reoccurring scholarship, so it occurs every year. And the application period is from the 1st of June till the 31st of July every year. So right now, we're going to take a look at the courses that are eligible for this uh, program. So I believe you can see the screen right now. Um, so these are the courses that are eligible. I'm also going to make this um, page available to you in the description. So it's, you can easily navigate and um, see the courses that are eligible. So the first course here is a Master of Analysis and Design of Social Protection Systems. And we have a Masters of Development and Governance, a Master of Public Policy, um, Masters in Peace and Conflict Studies, uh, we have Masters of Management in Nonprofit Organization. We have Masters of Governance and Public Policy. Uh, we have Development Studies MSc. And then we also have uh, the Public Management MSc. Okay, so if any of these courses interest you or uh, related to your field of study or is your field of study, I uh, will encourage you to submit an application. So how do you do that? Um, from this list, you can just click on any of the courses that interest you. For example, if you're interested in Masters uh, of um, Public Policy, you just need to click on it. You can see the university that offers this course right on the left. So I'm just going to click on that, and it takes me um, on the same page. Uh, I can You can see the, the, um, a more detailed explanation about the program. So if you go down, you will see the contact information right here. So this is the contact information of the university. So you can send an email, you can make a, you can call them, you can send an email on the admission process, or you can just go to their website right here and look at how they collect the application and apply to this scholarship. I already talked about um, how, how um, a university collects scholarship um, application in Germany. It can either be through post, you said that you are sending the documents to the university via Korea. Um, that is, you have to send hard copies, or uh, you are sending um, you are sending the uh, the documents via email. You just want to get all your documents via email, or they have an application portal in 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 their on their website that you can register and apply to this to the um, for admission. So it is quite easy to apply to this scholarship. Once you have all your documents set, uh, so I believe you you might have some questions about this, and I would be looking forward to get um, some some questions on that. So yeah, and I will take them. I will take the questions after the second part uh, of this live session. Okay. So um, right now I'm going to um, bring in um, Aneka. Aneka is my very good friend. Um, yeah, in in in, uh, in Germany, and we are very lucky to have him with us. Um, had to pull him out of a very busy schedule to be part of this um, live session, and I believe you're definitely going to um, get enlightened about studying in Germany, and definitely it will really benefit you. Uh, so I'm going to um, bring Aneka on to the stream. Yeah, so um, Aneka, you're welcome. It's very good to have you with us on this live stream. We're talking about um, things to improve the lives of, of people. 
others, <laughs> mostly Africans. Yeah, because a lot of persons are really interested in schooling abroad or moving uh, moving to um, a more developed country. So yeah, yeah I, I, I'm really happy to have you here and yeah, thank you so much. So you're welcome. Mm. Vigate is there. Mm. All is good, Undo. Yeah, that is how you say how are you doing in uh in, in German. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, can you tell us about yourself? Just introduce yourself so uh, my audience get to know you better. All right, first, um, thank you, Eugene, for having me here. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Anika Nakban and I'm I'm from Nigeria. Um, I'm a master's student of physical geography, environmental history, and the University of Bremen, Germany here. Thank you for having yeah. me here. Yeah, thank you very much for taking time to be part of this. Uh, we really appreciate it. So without wasting time, without further delay, we're just going to go straight into it. And you can keep dropping your questions as we go along. Um, we'll take a look at the questions um, um, after the first um, session, after the first part. Okay, so we want to go into the second part right now, um, which is studying in Germany. So we want to know the steps um, it takes to study in Germany. So the first question I have for Aneka is, what is the step-by-step -step process to study in Germany? Um, okay, um, basically, the things you need um, for you start studying in Germany is first, you need to have um, an admission letter from the school. So the first thing you do is you go online, you search for admission, you go for the school of your choice, check out the criteria, if it matches um, what you have, and then you apply to a school of your choice, and then you get the admission later. And then mm -hmm. the second one is to fund your blocked account. And um, what is required for the blocked account is you need to have a minimum of um, 10,322 euros in your blocked account. And the last step is um, the visa application. So you go to their websites, mm -hmm and um, apply, um, apply for your visa and then a uh, visa interview. And then during the application, you need to be very careful because if you make any mistake there, it will definitely affect the outcome of your um, visa interview when you eventually get to the embassy. Yeah, thank you very much, Anekan. Um, that's really enlightening. Um, so basically the first step is looking for admission, seeking for admission or applying yeah. for admission to any school, um, to yeah. your, your um, choice course. And um, talking about applying for admission, I've also uh, made a video on, on how to search for tuition free courses in Germany. So you want to take a look at my channel after this session to, to look at how you can search for tuition free courses because there are also courses that you have to pay tuition. Um, so you want to search for how, you want to look at, for that video on how to search for tuition-free courses. So thank you very much, Aneka. We'll go straight into um, the next question. Uh, you made mention about um, the visa um, application, which is also one important step in applying for or, or in studying in Germany. And I believe the, the audience will want to know um, the documents, the documents they have to put in the back of their mind, the documents that are required for the visa process or application. Okay. Um... The documents that are required for your visa application are um, first, as I said, it's admission letter. You need the admission letter. You need um, your blocked accounts um, documents, and um, you need a visa form. You need um, your birth certificates. You need your BSc, of course, your BSc and your transcripts. You need your YAC results and your first school living certificates. And um, you need a passport photograph. So the embassy has a specification for passports. So you need to check out for their own specification. And mm -hmm. also you need a motivation letter. Um, the motivation letter we have to comprise of um, like, why do you want to study in Germany? And why do you have to choose a course of study? And um, what you have to do after graduating? Will you go back to your country? Will you stay back in Germany? So these are the basic things you need to input in your um, motivational um, letter. And the last <laughs> thing is um, you need a um, health insurance cover. So basically, okay. these are the things you need. Those are the documents you need for your visa application. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very okay. much. Um, you made mention of the question, do you want to go, will you have to go back to your home country or do you want to stay back? What do you think should be the best answer? 
to that question. Okay. Uh, even um, while writing your motivation letter, you need to tell them that after your studies in Germany, you have to go back to your country. No, even if you know that. <laughs> yeah, no. Even if you know that you don't intend going back, you need to tell them that you have to go back to your country after acquiring the knowledge in um, in Germany. That you have to use the knowledge you are, um, you acquired to improve your country too. So you have to tell them you have to go back. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we'll go straight to the next um, question. Um, I believe a lot of persons have heard about block account. Um, some persons have not heard about block account. Uh, and, um, maybe they, they've heard, but they don't really understand what it is or how to go about it. So can you enlighten us on what is the block account and um, how do you create a block account? Okay, um, a block account, um, it's a type of bank account that is required by the German German law for international students to secure their German visa. And um, mm -hmm. the minimum requirement for this um, blocked account is, as I mentioned earlier, it's 10,332 euros. So um, opening a blocked account is not actually very difficult. What you need to do is you send an email to the organization that's, okay, let me see, there are um, different companies that are in charge or different organizations that are in charge of opening blocked accounts. So you can actually check out which one fits you more. And um, I think the basic ones or the widely used one by, uh, ones by students are the Expatrio, the Fintiba, and the Coraco. So what you do mm -hmm. is log into their website, get their email address, send them an email telling them that, okay, I want to open a blocked account. So what do I have to do? What do I need to do? And then you reply your email and tell you what to do. So it's about sending a mail and receiving a mail. Okay. It's not really difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Um, I believe a lot of patients are getting um, some ideas, more ideas about this. Um, okay. You can always drop your questions. We'll take a look at them after this part. And we go to the next question, um, um, which is this. I know a lot of persons would... It, it might be difficult to get this block money, like the 10,000 plus euro for the block account. And a lot of okay. persons source for this fund and with the mindset that once they come into Germany, they are going to refund, they are going to withdraw the money and refund back to um, the person that has given them this money or the people. Okay, so... Um, yeah. I had this question in one of my social media. Uh, so I want to, I want you to uh, answer this question also. Can I withdraw the entire 10,322 euro from my blocked account when I arrive in Germany? Um, no, it's not possible for you to withdraw the entire money in your block accounts. You can only withdraw a fraction monthly. Like if you are depositing 10,322 euros, you can mm -hmm. only um, access or withdraw 861 euros per month. It's not allowed. Mm -hmm. It's not possible to withdraw the entire money until, okay. the, until after right. 11 months. Okay, yeah. yeah. I believe a lot of persons are enlightening, but I also, it, it's possible to get like twice of the money when you, when you come into Germany, right? Yeah, that's for the first month after arrival. And then for the first month, this is what they call unblocking of accounts. So you have, when you arrive in Germany, you yes. create another bank account here in Germany, mm -hmm. and then you have to connect it to your blocked accounts in which the money will be forwarded to your new account monthly. So for the first month of your arrival, yes. you have um, like times two of the money you're supposed to withdraw. Well, that's 861 times two for the first yeah, month. Exactly. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. That is really enlightening. Um, so we go straight to the next question for this part. Um, do you think there are any advantage or advantages studying in Germany? What do you think? Of course. Compared to, compared to places like US, or Canada, and because a lot of places want to go to Canada, right? Um, mm. Compared to Canada, the UK. So what do you think? Are there advantages studying in Germany? Of course, there are advantages studying in Germany. I'll start by saying, like, it's the degrees in Germany, like the degrees you get here are internationally recognized. So anyway, anyway, you, um, by the time you get your degree here, you can take it to any part of the world and it's recognized, you get. And another thing is here in Germany, it's tuition free. So you don't have to be worried about huge sums 
exactly. of um, payments, like other countries you just mentioned. So yes. here in Germany, you just need to pay a token as a semester fee. And also here, the living expensive is quite affordable. Exactly. So you can have little money in your bank accounts and still live a good life. And um, the education system here and the academic system is so good and quite flexible. What I mean by being flexible is you can actually choose um, a few credit uh, points each semester. You can spread it around to about two or three years, depending on how you want it. So it's flexible enough for you to be schooling and be working at the same time here and actually having good grades. Nice. And um, nice. also the study programs here is mostly in English. So you get to meet a lot of English speakers here and you get to meet a lot of English speaking people around. And also um, with your student ID here in Germany, you don't have to um, spend too much. You don't have to spend on transportation. So with your student ID, you can actually move around to any part um, of the state you want to. Yes. Yes. Like with your student ID, you can actually go to different states um, as it allows in your um, uh, student ID. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you make mention uh, about pos um, about uh, taking a few credit points. Yeah, can you throw more light? Does it mean that I can actually pause my studies and maybe work for some time and then come back to my studies, right? Yeah, a lot of persons do that. So you can just put it on hold. Okay, I don't have enough money to do some certain things, so I'll just take a break for this semester. I'm not taking any courses this semester, so I just have to hold on, go work, make money, come back, and continue from where you stopped. It's actually very possible. It's that yeah, flexible. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that is it for this um, session or for these parts. Okay, and um, right now I'm going to be looking at some questions before we go into um, cost of living in Germany and student jobs in Germany. I believe a lot of persons don't just want to study, but they also want to work and make some money while studying. So that is the part that is going to be coming in after taking some questions. I, I believe we have some questions. Um, so after taking these questions, we can look at um, we can look at that um, session. So you don't want to um, skip away. You don't want to um, leave this session. Just hold on. We're, we're going to. I believe this um, the questions we're going to take right now are also going to benefit you. So keep watching. Okay. So I'm going to take the first question right here. Okay, uh, maybe Anika can take a look at this. This is from Felis. Uh, Felis is asking, can I apply for different masters? I did mathematics and will I get the scholarship? Okay, maybe yeah. I, sh I should take a look at this. Uh, yeah, right? Or do you want to? Okay, you can start then. Okay, yeah. Um, if you've done mathematics, maybe in your, in, you, did, you, you did the mathematics maybe in your first degree, um, yes, you can actually apply to different courses. It doesn't mean that you must apply to mathematics. You can you can apply for a different master's program. Um, even if you have um, done a master's program in a different course, you can apply for another master's program in another course. Sometimes it might be related. Sometimes it might not be related. Um, most of these universities also take, um, they take note of your work experience. For example, you did a course uh, which is not related to what you want to apply to. But what you want to apply to, you have some work experience on that. So you can also put that in your in your letter of motivation. You can write to the school, you want to do this, you have experience in this. They will also consider that even if your first degree is not that related, but it is very possible. And yes, getting a scholarship is not a matter of will I get a scholarship? Yes, will I not get a scholarship? No. It's a matter of you applying and competing for that scholarship. There are a lot of persons applying and also competing for it. Yeah, so if you put in a very strong um, application, definitely, why not? You can get a scholarship. Uh, yeah, I just put, like this morning, somebody messaged me. Um, she got a scholarship right from this uh, channel. One of the one of the, my uh, scholars in this channel got a scholarship. So, and if that's fully funded scholarship, the flight is going to be paid down to Germany. So that is very interesting. So why not put in your application and yeah, you can get a scholarship. So let's take another question. This is a long one from Okeke okay, okay. Roberts. 
Um, it's saying my last certificate is 22, and it was gotten in 2012 from Labisi University, higher diploma, and interested in scholarship. Uh, my course is transport management. Kindly advice, kindly advice I do. Uh, okay, if I understand what you're saying, yeah, your grade is okay. 2-2 two, two is, is not a bad grade. Yeah, you can apply to the courses. The first thing is looking at the scholarship, checking the eligibility. Um, it doesn't matter if mm -hmm. uh, where you finish from. Um, your grade is okay. If you have some more um, work experience or skills to also bag it up, it's fine. So you can always put in your application to any scholarship. Sometimes your, your grade might not be too good, but... You, you come you, you discover that those persons can also get the scholarship if you put in a very um, nice motivation letter. So those yeah. things are also taken into consideration. So definitely, yeah, you, you are interested in scholarship, apply. If you are interested in any scholarship, apply to the scholarship. So that is my advice for you. So we also have another question here. We're going to take it right away from Lambeck. Um, so Lambeck is asking, is it possible to stay in Germany um, even... Uh, after I finish my studies. So um, maybe Aneka should answer this. Okay. Um, yes, it's possible for you to stay in Germany even after your studies. After your studies, you'll be given 18 months um, post study. So this 18 months gives you an opportunity for you to work, earn money, or you learn a skill. So after the 18 months, if you can learn a skill or if you can get a good job, and then it's very possible for you to stay back in Germany, then apply for another visa, or you change from your student visa to a normal regular visa. But immediately after your studies, you'll be given 18 months to study, to work here or learn a skill. Yeah. Good. Interesting. Interesting. So uh, I believe you've gotten the response. Um, we'll take the next question um, from um, Pride. Self Pride, uh, so uh, Self Pride is asking, do you need a block account for a scholarship? Okay, I will take this. Um, no, you do not need a block account for a scholarship. Um, I did. I did not use the block account to come into Germany because I got the Dad EPS scholarship. So you don't need a block account if you have a scholarship. So I believe it also depends on the amount of scholarship. If you have um, a scholarship that does not give you up to eight hundred and sixty-one monthly then maybe you would need um, some proof of fund, maybe not as much. I do not know. But if you have a scholarship, a full scholarship that gives you up to 861 euro monthly, then you do not need um, you do not need a block account. Okay. So um, there's another question here. Is HND allowed from Nora? So Nora is asking, is HND allowed? Um, I don't know what specifically. Um, maybe for admission or for scholarship, I don't know. But maybe we can take it for admission. Um, Aneka, do you have any idea on this? I think if it's for admission, I think um, the HND it's allowed. Basically, what they actually look for is your transcripts, your grades, what you had in your um, HND. So it's not about HND or BSc. It's about the quality of your transcripts and the courses you offered. So okay. HND is allowed. Yeah, yeah. I also want to add to this. Um, the best way to know if, um, because it varies, the best way to know if your HND can get you into um, uh, a course in Germany is by contacting that university. So um, one thing about uh, Germany or any Western university is that they reply their email. So once you send an email, you are definitely going to get a response. Um, so I would advise that you send an email. So the university. first of all, you want to get a course. So it also depends on the course. Some courses might allow it. Some courses might not. Some universities might allow it. Some universities might not. So it varies. So the best thing to do is to make an inquiry. Send an email to that university. I want to apply to this course. I finished um, with HND in this. Am I eligible with my with my degree in uh, with my with my HND degree be um, enough to get me into this course? So ask you get a response. So that is the best way to go into it. Okay, so I don't know if we can take more questions. I will just look at the questions so that we can go to the next session so we don't spend too much time on this. Um, 
I will definitely look at the questions even after the live session and provide answers to um, this, these um, questions. Okay. All right. Okay, so yeah, now we can go into the final session, um, the final part of this live. And that would be um, living expenses in Germany as well as um, student jobs in Germany. Okay, so we go straight into it. So I'm gonna be asking some series of questions to Aneka and yeah, I believe I trust him to give the best answers. Okay, so the first question is, how much would be enough for living expenses monthly in Germany? Well, I I receive this kind of questions a lot. How much would be enough for living expenses monthly in Germany? I think it's relative. It depends on how much, um, it depends on the kind of person you are, if you're a big spender or if, you know how to you know manage your money, spender. yeah, rightly. But then, basically, I think about six hundred to six hundred and fifty euros should be enough for you in a month. Okay, I break it down this way because okay. for your house rent, you need about two hundred and sixty to three hundred and fifty euros per month for your house rent, and you have to pay for insurance cover too, which is from forty euros to um, one hundred and sixty euros, depending on um, the kind of insurance cover you're using. If it is cheaper to use the private insurance and it's more expensive to use the public um, health insurance. And also you have other bills to pay like the radio bills. So if you put these things to get, uh, together and then you notice that um, you have to spend up to 600 and um, to, uh, to 650 euros monthly. Uh, also, uh, sorry, I forgot to, to include um, the feeding too. You, you spend about 150 to 250 euros monthly it depends on how much you consume food but then for a normal person like me i think 600 euros is enough for me for a month yeah yeah i will agree with aneka on that um but if you're on scholarship definitely your um your living expenses should not be as high as that because um your insurance is going to be taken care of so you're going to minus that i think that's the only thing that you're going to minus on that uh, you're also going to pay your rent. And I, I, I also agree that um, the rent ranges between um, average, on an average, between 230 or so to about um, 350. But for me, I'm paying about 300 euro every month for rent. And yeah, and for about living expense for food, maybe about 150 euro will take care of that. But one thing you should put at the back of your mind is that the major expense that you're going to occur um, is your rent. That is the major expense. Every other thing would be um, not too big. That's maybe. Minimal. Yeah, yeah. So I believe um, a lot of persons um, are lighting up with that. And if you have a question on that, you can also drop it on the comment. We'll take it after this part. So the next question uh, will be, what students' jobs are available in Germany? Okay, um, I'll start by saying there are different types of jobs in Germany that students can actually do. You have the full-time job, which you can which um, you can do for five days in a week, and it comprises of one hundred and thirty hours. That is, if you want to pause your studies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people can actually. Some people do combine full-time jobs and studies. I did that. I did that for for about six months. But it was a bit stressful, but I did it definitely 130 as um plus your studies. So for the full-time job, kind of uh, which has to do with 130 hours um per month and have the part-time job 80 hours um per month, and it's quite flexible, more flexible. It gives you enough time to study and to go to work too. And the last one is the mini jobs, and um, which is basically for weekends. So you go to job either um Friday evenings or Saturdays. So the mini jobs for frequently the weekends and you don't have you don't earn much. It's about 250 euros to 300 euros. So basically these are the kind of jobs you have here in Germany. Yeah. Thank you very much for your answer. Yeah, I think it's very correct. It's very right. Yeah. So we'll take the next question without delay. Um, how do I 
how do I get student jobs in Germany? Okay, mm -hmm. um, to get student jobs in Germany is not really difficult. When you get to Germany, you get to meet a lot of persons. So first, you can actually ask somebody, you know, okay, how do I get student job? And um, maybe reply, mostly the replies are always, okay, I'll send you the link or you'll be directed to um, an organization or a company. There's what we call them, Cyber Bytes here, like they're an organization that um, recruits for companies. So you can actually, there are a whole lot of them here in um, Germany. So you can actually talk to your office and tell them, okay, I need a job. And then they will tell you the kind of jobs that are available and um, when it's available. And then you can actually sign a contract with them and start working. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Um, the first call of action is meeting those people you meet um, in the country where you have moved to and asking them, how do I get a job, a student job? So definitely they have been in that situation and they have um, the right information. They have the links and numbers mm -hmm. to give to you to send a message or email to send a message. And yeah, it is not as difficult as that. Um, and also you can simply Google... Um, jobs near me right yeah jobs near me um and then the list of jobs will just pop out and then yeah. you can register and with the email and then you can start receiving mails from people that are interested in you yeah exactly yeah. exactly thank you very much for that um we we'll go to the next um question um what is the range of payments for these jobs so as I said before, the range of payments depends on the type of job you're doing. So if you're going for the full job, um, the full-time job, so it ranges from say 1,400 euros to 1,800 euros per month. So if you're going for the part-time job, it ranges from 700 to 800 euros in a month. So the mini jobs are quite small. So because it's just for the weekend, so you don't earn more than you earn at least um, 250 to 300 euros. Okay, thank so, you. Yeah. yeah, okay, so we, we go to the next question so that we don't spend too much time. Um, how many hours can I work as a student in Germany? Okay, um, it's 900 hours for students. You okay. can't exceed, you're not supposed to exceed 900 hours or 120 in a year. days here in a year. Oh, okay. Yeah. So 900 hours in a year. In a year, yes. Interesting. Okay, I think um, that is the last question from my part. Now we can have the opportunity to see if there are any questions from the audience. Uh, okay, let's see if there are any questions relating to the jobs. Okay, I think we have answered um, this question from um, Seth Bry. Uh, who is asking, um, are you allowed to work as a student on scholarship? Uh, yeah, so the, the, the answer to this question is yes, you're allowed to work as a student in, uh, if, you're in, in if you have a scholarship, um, but you have to let your scholarship um, aware that you are working. And you, you can't work full time, you only have to work with the um, allocated time the scholarship allows you. Yeah, so it is possible to work even if you have a scholarship. Um, I'm going to take this other question. So this is from um, Loe. Uh, Loe is asking uh, if no, I don't, maybe I, I missed the first one. So how much can it cost to study it there, please? Uh, I think Loe asked the question before at the beginning, right? Yeah, maybe I think we missed that because it looks like a continuation to yeah, it looks like yeah. Okay, uh, I can't see the question um from lower. Um so maybe we'll take another um question. Okay, let's see what we have here. So okay, okay, I think this is it. Um it says, um, I would like to know if someone can have a scholarship to study microbiology in, in German. Maybe in Germany, in German, okay, in Germany. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, it is possible. You just have to search. Um, in the beginning of this video, I, I I taught how to search for scholarships. So you can search and see if 
there are any of uh, any scholarship that offers um, that offers uh, uh, any program any scholarship in uh, for microbiology. So I would advise you go to the database that I like that, that I've shown and search. Yeah, definitely there should be um, a scholarship for microbiology. Um, I have a friend who is studying uh, molecular biology um, right here in Bremen. Um, he got a scholarship. I'm also going to talk about that scholarship on my channel very soon. Um, so I believe molecular biology is quite related to um, um, and to microbiology. And yes, you can have a scholarship for microbiology. The scholarship I'm going to be talking about is um, open for almost all courses. Uh, you can apply for an admission to, to any course and then you apply to the scholarship. So you can use that scholarship for any course. So just stay tuned and I'll be talking about that scholarship um, very soon, okay? I, let's see if we can take any other question. Okay, not um, I, I. I can reply to all these other to the other questions um, um, after the session. Uh, so you can also drop your questions if you are watching this session after the live. Uh, you can also drop your questions, and we're definitely going to take a look at it. Um, Aneka, do you have any final word to the audience um, as we try to round up? Okay, um, what I just have to say is. You should go to the YouTube channel, check out for um, any courses or um, that fits your profile. Apply to yeah. it, ask questions, and I believe if you're positive about it, everything is going to turn out well. And I hope to see you guys here in Germany. Yeah, thank, thank you very you. much. Like it's yeah. it's really um, um, we're really privileged to have you with us, um, enlightening us on these aspects. So thank, thank you very you. much for taking our time out of your schedule to be part of this session. I really appreciate it personal, uh, personally, and I believe the audience also do. Yeah, thank you very much. It was nice having you, Aneka. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. and before we go, um, I'm just going to show you some other opportunities on my YouTube channel that you can take a look at. Um, OK, let me do that quickly. So there are a lot of opportunities right here. You can take a look at the Daddy PS scholarship, like I said earlier, and you can also see the McCall McBain scholarship. You can take a look at it. So there are a lot of programs, a lot of scholarships, opportunities that I share on this channel. And if you're not subscribed, you can also hit the subscribe button so that you do not miss um, um, any um, opportunity that I post in the future. Also turn on the bell notification. And yeah, it was nice having you on this um, session. And I really appreciate you taking that time to be part of it. And uh, with this, I'm going to say thank you very much for your time and see you in my next video. Bye.